What is going on? Welcome back. Alex here with another video about aviation and today we're going to talk about how you can become an aircraft mechanic. If you're new and you like aviation related content and you want to know more about the industry, go ahead and subscribe. Click on the notification bell so you can get notified anytime I put a new video. And without any further ado, let's get right into it. So there's some basic requirements you need, and that is you need to be 18 and you need to understand, read and speak the English language. And there's really three ways you can become an aircraft mechanic. So let's go and talk about the first way that you can become an aircraft mechanic is by attending a part 147 AMT school. What that means is that the school has complied with all the requirements stated in the Code of Federal Regulation Title 14 and Part 147. These schools offer the ability to get an airframe and power plant rating or both. Most AMT schools are going to require you to have at least a high school diploma or GED. Schooling will last anywhere from 12 months to 24 months depending on what ratings they're going to be offering. Actually, this is the way I got my AMP and I think from all the different options is the best and the fastest way to get where you want to be at. I believe there's about 170 schools nationwide. So I'm actually going to provide a link below where you can actually find a school nearby. So from all these 170 schools, I'll definitely focus on the ones that have the ability to providing the airframe and the power plant rating. And sometimes these schools also have like an avionics course that you can also take, which is really valuable in the marketplace. I will also look for the ability of being able to test for your orals and practicals at the end of each block. Some schools have an exemption from the FAA that allows them to do that. If not, you will have to take the whole entire course and then at the end of everything, you will have to go back in the books and study what you studied like a couple months back. So at the end of the day, it's better if you can test as you go. Now, usually to be able to participate in these exemptions, you have to be a, an extraordinary student and always be there and always be on time. It, they don't offer this to anyone, but at least if they have the ability, you want to definitely go with that school because I'm telling you, once you go through the whole entire course, it is super hard to go and study the whole shebang again because obviously you're not going to rem remember everything. You're not going to remember what you did a year back. For the schools that don't offer this assumption, well, there's no other way. You're going to have to go through the whole entire course. At the end of everything, they're going to give you a certificate of completion for your airframe and power plant. And with the certificate of completion, you're going to be able to go and take all your knowledge tests for the general airframe and power plant. Once you have passed those tests, you're going to have 24 calendar months to call your aircraft mechanic examiner and set up your practicals. Once you have passed all your knowledge tests and you have scheduled your orals and practicals, I always recommend that you do one rating at a time. So either way, you're always going to have to do general and airframe or power plant. So that's what I recommend. Do general and power plant. And once you have passed that, keep studying for your airframe and then go take your airframe orals and practicals. If you feel confident of doing all three at once, go right ahead. Now, if you don't want to go to a part 147 school, well, you have another option and that is becoming an apprentice at a repair station or an FBO. If you don't know anyone in aviation, it is going to be a little bit hard to get a job in a, in a shop because most of them want to, want to see some sort of experience. But I mean, if you do have some background in you know working on things, maybe cars or whatever the case may be, you might be able to land a job. Obviously, it's going to be a lot easier if you know someone in the industry that can hook you up. But I'm 100% sure that they're going to put you doing some basic things like cleaning the floor, cleaning and tidying up the hangar, and potentially washing the airplanes. After you earn your chops and the staff likes you, they might start letting you work on the airplanes. When this happens, make sure that you have an AMT logbook. I will actually put a link below so you can buy one. In this logbook, you're going to put every single thing you do. I don't care if it's minute, you're going to log every single thing you do in that shop and have the supervising AMP that double check your work, sign on it. You're going to have to do this for 18 months for each rating or 30 months in total 
if you're seeking both ratings, which is the airframe and the power plant. The FAA considers one month if you worked 160 hours total throughout that month. So this is going to be a full-time job for you. So you got to make sure that the employer is giving you at least 40 hours a week. Apart from logging every single thing you're doing, also make sure that you save all your pay stubs or any type of paperwork they give you. So that way, when you meet up with an FA inspector at your local FISDO, you're going to be able to show proof of all the work that you've done. Now, if you're new, FISDO stands for Flight Standards Districts Office. A question that comes into mind is the, actually the regulations are kind of vague. The only thing they tell you is that you need 18 months for each rating or 30 months in total. But the question is, what do you do in that time, right? And I haven't really gotten a clear answer on what they actually want you to do. So again, this is my own recommendation. I would at least make sure that while your time employed with this shop, that you do each and every single item in the PTS for the general airframe and power plant. I'm also going to put all the links to the PTS on the description. The reason why I recommend this is because anyways, you're going to be tested on. So once you go and take your orals and practicals, anything in that PTS, they can ask you or they can ask you to do. So you might as well just do it while you're working. Another thing that I would recommend is you can go into the curriculum of a current part 147 school and perform all the different tasks that they have in this curriculum. You can never go wrong with that. Once you have done the 30 months, then you can go ahead and call the FA. You can call your local flight districts and stand, uh, flight standards districts office or FISDO and set up an appointment with an FA inspector. This person is going to go over your logbook. He's going to go over all your pay stubs, make sure that you have enough proof to show that you've done these 30 months or 18 months if you're looking for one rating. And then you're going to be able to take your knowledge test. Once you complete the knowledge test, just like when you go to a part 147, you're going to be able to schedule your orals and practicals. Now, if you love this country and you want to serve it, well, the third option is join the military. Before you join and you select an occupational specialty or MOS military occupational specialty, call the local FISDO and request a list of the MOS that the FA is currently giving credit for. Because it doesn't mean that you can go in the military and choose an occupation, do that, and you're gonna get credit. I mean, that, that's in regards to working on, on different aircraft. Make sure that whatever occupation you choose is in this list, because if not, they're not gonna give you credit for it. Also, the training period, they're not gonna give you credit for that either. It's only once you have gone through the whole training and you start working on different airplanes or different uh, helicopters, that's when they're going to start counting the time and they're gonna give you credit for that and not for your training. Once you get out of the military, you can go to the local FISDO, set up an appointment and show them all your documentation. I believe you're gonna need a letter of employment in the military and all their different documentation. And with that, they're going to allow you to take your knowledge test and your orals and practicals. This is it for today. I hope you liked it. If you found this helpful, please drop a like for the YouTube algorithm. And if you wanna see more content like this, well, subscribe. I will see you in the next video.